my friend Nathaniel, a very talented boat builder, built this kayak. He also made this video. Because of copyright, I can only show you a short clip of the video. It's a very nice boat. You can read the step-by-step -step instruction in building this kayak at Make Magazine. Please also watch the full version of the video. I will include that link at the end of this video. Before you start building your kayak, I highly suggest you to make a paper model first, and that will help you to build the actual one. This is the final video of this series. I'm going to give you tips to help you to build a kayak. Hopefully you find them useful. Let's take a look at the kayak plan. You may wonder why these two full lines stopped it there. I wanted to create a hull shape as in my earlier boat. Let's take a look at the cross section of the part of the kayak. If I don't have those two full lines, the hull shape will be a sharp V and the width of the water plane will be very narrow. But after I add those two full lines, the water plane is wider and the bow is getting more stable. What if I extend those two full lines all the way to the front as shown here? Because of the property of corpust, the bow will be fed out a little bit as shown here. Ideally, I want the bow to be straight as shown in this drawing. That's why I didn't want to extend the line all the way to the front. One option is to cover it up, as shown here in the product. Item 2 is about the main structural element of the kayak. For Gen 12, I use 6mm thick corpust, and also the kayak is only 10 feet long. I used three cross members made from a PVC pipe and this provides me sufficient strength for this kayak. Gen 14 is built with 4mm thick corpust, and it's also 12 feet long. Therefore, my friend used four cross beams to strengthen the kayak. My friend mounted 2.5 feet long lattice cap as the gunnel at the bow and also at the stern to create a very strong, triangular shape supporting structure for the kayak. This is a very good design approach. However, the bow and stern will be too rigid, and it is a little bit more difficult when you try to fold it into a smaller form factor for transportation. One trade-off would be to use shorter lattice cap, say one and a half feet long, and also move the cross beam a little bit forward. There are different ways to secure the PVC pipe onto the metal pipe strap on the gunnel. You may try to pass a piece of rope or lashing to prevent the pipe from jumping out from the metal strap. The middle part of the kayak is 20 inches and you can make the cross beam a little bit longer if you want to increase the stability of the boat. These are the reference dimensions for cutting the holes at the bow and at the stern. Assume that you use 4mm thick corpus to make the floor. This is the first layer. Please pay attention to the direction of the channel and then the second layer. The third layer can be smaller. All these layers extend the past the fold line. This will prevent the bow from bending, especially at the back of the boat. When weight is added onto the boat, the buoyant force will push the stern and also the bow up. We can fix this problem by strengthening the floor. For a small kayak, your feet actually extend all the way to the front part of the bow, and that helps to prevent the bow from bending and your body actually become part of the structural element of the kayak. The buoyancy force is also less at the bow. That's why in this very first prototype, you see bending at the stern, but the bow is pretty good. Instead of using corpus as the third layer of the floor, 
You can also use a quarter inch thick plywood. It will work very well too. You can use rope and PVC pipe to make a foot rest. The construction is similar to some of the products in the market. And you can watch my Gen 10 kayak video to see how I make one. Gen 12 and Gen 14 is more like a canoe than a kayak because it's missing the deck. You can use corpus to create a deck and use the bungee cord to secure it on the front and create a deck. Whenever you heat up plastic, such as a PVC pipe or corpus, I suggest you to do that in a well ventilated area. This manufacturer provided test data regarding the safety of corpus. When corpus is heat, it will generate carbon monoxide. But the carbon monoxide given off by burning corpus is less than for carbon, as shown here in this table. With the fusion temperature of less than 400 degrees, the process is pretty safe. I hope these videos helped you to be a kayak. If you find them useful, please give me a thumbs up. Tell your friends about it too. Thanks for subscribing to my channel and help to grow my channel. See you again. Bye.